Welcome to our video on cottage garden meets market garden. We are taking what we learned three years ago and merging it with the garden that we attempted to do last year. And it ties in both of our personalities of the whimsical cottage garden, which is what I like, and Scott likes the straight lines <laughs> and cleanliness of a garden. Which is interesting because you don't prefer, you don't have many preferences. I like order. That, okay, that is true. You like order, and so there's now order in the chaos right. of the garden. Adam and Eve gardens, it's all very biblical. Amen. This is how it looked when we got back from South Africa. We raked leaves in November, and then over the course of us being gone, all the dead leaves continued to fall. So we still had a bit of garden cleanup to do this year, which I'm grateful we left a lot of it because a lot of things came back, like the Brussels sprouts and the cabbage and broccoli, and now they're all flowering. So that happened to work out. And all of our herbs are coming back, so cleaning all of those things up. Cottage core meets market garden. Last year, we had a bit of a whimsical garden. We got a late start. Yeah, we didn't know we were gonna buy this house till late spring. Yeah, I'd say March or April. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of dug straight into the dirt. No compost, no wood chips. Which we know isn't the best thing because we've tried that before at our 2018 garden and we just kind of won it, but we also were tight for time. And because we were tight for time, we just did what we needed to do just to get any garden going, which caused us a lot of problems. We had vole issues, which we've never experienced before, so we didn't really know what to do about it. We had cutworm issues, which we've never experienced before. It's actually a moth that in its caterpillar form, it just wraps around your starts and then chops off the plant. Another problem that we have had before is that my wife gets a lot of tomato starts. Which is it happening again this year. <laughs> That's why it's a problem we have regularly. Every season we've ever had. So this is what the garden looked like when we started last year. So we're showing you what it looked like last year to give you an idea of how we are merging the gardens. I wanted to do a cottage garden style, and so I thought it would be really fun to make all different types of paths, but it was kind of a pain when it came to mowing. <laughs> that was kind of a problem. Also, I like straight lines. Kelly likes whimsy. <laughs> and there was a lot of wasted space. Like that middle area within the tomato circle, the grassy area, I had this idea that I would lay a blanket out there and read books, which I did actually lay out and read books there a little bit in the summer once the tomatoes grew up and gave us privacy, but it is valuable garden space. So that was one thing we quickly realized was that leaving it as grass was kind of wasted space. In the past when we've done the market style garden, which we will show you next, by this point in the season, the garden would have been so fruitful and luscious, and last year's was not. Everything was a struggle. I don't think there was enough nutrients in the ground, so even though we had things actually grow, we didn't really get that many tomatoes. And now we will share with you what we did for our 2021-2022 garden season, which was the market style garden. Got all six beds laid out looks a bit of a mess because we still have to rake and clean up and stuff got all of our wood chip pathways in it's just those final two pathways we need to put in and we'll carry on scooping from that middle bed where the pile was onto the other piles um, still need to put a wood chip ring around the edge just to stop any rain runoff so the wood chips will kind of keep everything in this area which is great because it's a kind of a slope down there We'll take some of that soil and do our two garden beds against the house. Let's show the coconut core. The core. It's like wheat picks. <laughs> so we're gonna use this as our seed starter. It's just 
the coconut core, the organic stuff. We've never done this before. Coconut hair. It was only four bucks, so <laughs> we thought we'd give it a try. We're gonna go ahead and start, start some seeds, bring them in the house. And then I think we'll make a go of it and maybe try and make our own little plastic um, hoop frames. houses, frames, and see if we can get a, our season started earlier than normal. So we ended up buying a hoop bend or like a pole bender thing from some online agri. It was the people who created the mm -hmm. design of it. Yeah. And then we just went and bought some electrical conduit pole, which was super cheap at the time. However, it's now like 10 times the price. So it's now a luxury spend, I would imagine. I think it was $3 a post mm -hmm. when we got it. Yeah, but you can just bend those poles into these half circles, which is great. And then we just got plastic tarp from any hardware store and cut them into strips and then just weighed them down with stones or wood or whatever. And it worked really well. It kept the frost off of everything. And I think it even made like that greenhouse effect and things just grew so well this garden season. We were in all. <laughs> this was our best garden season we had ever experienced before. And I didn't do spacing right. Uh, we just kind of planted wherever. There wasn't really a plan, but it worked. So what is the market style garden? I watched a lot of videos from a guy by the name of Richard Perkins, and he's a market gardener, meaning they grow for market. So this is the most effective system for a lot of vegetables in the most amount of growing time. Because he plants multiple things together. Mm -hmm. So he strings the tomatoes so they go up high and he Onions plants... underneath or basil underneath. So companion planting, succession planting. The soil's not exposed mm -hmm. because you're covering it with... The compost is your mulch. With plants. And plants, but the compost is a mulch because it's technically not soil. True. And this was our ginger from that year, which was so fun to plant and it did really well. So that's another thing we haven't done since. So I'm gonna try that again this year. And you can see some of our harvest from that garden season. Year two ended up being even better because the foundation was already there. Yeah, and that's the common thing that a lot of people will say about gardening is that it costs way more money to garden than to just buy your produce and it's too much effort and all this stuff. That's true for the first year. After you've laid it all down, you've got such a rich platform for the next few years. It just gets better and better and then you start adding your own compost amendments. It's a system that creates its own momentum. Those tenants would have had a beautiful third year garden to, to, work, with. to work with. It was quite sad after we moved out, our landlord was, which we asked for permission to do a garden, and uh, he obviously didn't know what a garden was, so he was very upset by this beautiful garden when we moved out. And he reseeded lawn. Yeah, he dug it all up, and he planted grass. God bless. God bless. The I bet that grass is the best grass. <laughs> The wood chip paths though are also very nice for mm -hmm. working and walking and it keeps everything very aesthetically pleasing. It's pretty rough the first couple of weeks so they need to weather in and, and compact in as you walk over them a lot and then they become pretty soft. You can walk on them barefoot once yeah. they're broken in. Which says a lot for me. Yeah. <laughs> Scott has African feet so he can walk pretty much on the wood chips as they <laughs> are freshly cut, but I, on the other hand, it takes a while for my feet to be comfortable walking barefoot on them. We've done raised beds one season when we lived in Kentucky. We did a big raised bed garden, and there's pros and cons to that as well. It's really nice. I think the big con would be the cost, the initial cost of that. This is definitely still costs money to start, but not as much money as all the wood you would need and all of the dirt that you would need. So if you have wood and you have access to good dirt for not a lot of money, then raised beds would probably be ideal. Now that you have a picture for the market style garden, we are now merging this style garden with the current whimsical path. Cottage core. Cottage style garden. So the first thing that we did was get compost. That's always an upfront cost, but once you do it, you've 
pretty much set yourself up for the next five years. And then next, we raked all the leaves that we had over the areas that we wanted to fully cover and then went ahead and marked out our lines. And it was at this point that we realized we needed to mulch the leaves because they were just gonna get all compacted down. So we went and got a new lawn mower that has a mulch bag and could cut up our leaves. And then any of the plants from last year that were in the path that we were making anew, we dug up and saved those so we could replant them. The market garden dimensions that all the market garden tools and farmers and everything subscribes to is one and a half foot walkways and two and a half foot beds. That allows you to step across a bed, allows you to reach across a bed, and I suppose all the spacings and things. Yeah, you can get a lot of plants in the two and a half feet. Then we got wood chips, which always smell great. This was one trailer's worth for about five yards. With the cardboards underneath, I've never been like a big proponent of putting cardboard down until Creeping Charlie <laughs> in our lives. So I did not do a good enough job on making sure the cardboard overlapped because we, you know, two weeks in now from this are having Creeping Charlie come up. Still, in the cracks. even with a huge, like this is a thick layer of wood chips and compost mm -hmm. and even still they're fighting their way to the surface yeah but we had lots of big boxes of cardboard and then some paper so that's what we used anywhere that didn't have leaves over it mm -hmm. over the winter to kill the grass we put the cardboard down when you first start out doing it i was i said to scott this is a mess it doesn't look good at all and he's like trust the process it'll be fine and it looks really good now our neighbor who comes for a walk every afternoon offered us his tiller. Begged us to use his Please. tiller. <laughs> so we're, we're like, just wait, watch what we're doing. So these are our strawberries. Thank you so much, Lauren, for sending us your strawberry plants last year. They have done so well. So we've basically finished our walkways and beds. We do need to top up a few of the end edge beds and walkways still. Uh, I've got a big black plastic over it trying to kill the char. There's the big black plastic over it trying to kill the Charlies and then the creeping Charlie. And then we've been digging these terraces up the bank. You can see our strawberries have run wild in the middle bed there on the first part of the terrace. And then the second terrace, I've put in these gabion basket like cages of hardware cloth to try and keep the voles out of our onions and potatoes. So there's onions in the first one and potatoes in the second one. And then we're gonna do a third one. With no basket and just see how the potatoes do without any protection. And we just ordered our potatoes from Azure and they always sprout anyways. So that's why I was like, well, we will use those as seed potatoes. We still aren't sure if the cutworms will come up through the soil. So we put the little cones around all the cabbages and broccolis because that's what helped last year. And look at those roots from the Brussels sprouts. My Brussels sprouts did get a bit leggy in the house, so I'm hoping that they will be fine outside. This is just a little glimpse into our garden as it is now, and we hope that you enjoyed watching it.